Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at taking the HC SR505 motion sensor and integrating it with Home Assistant. Okay, so here's the Amazon page for the motion sensors that we will be using. Uh, you can see you can get two of them here for £6.40. Uh, so £3.20 each is pretty good value if you ask me. Uh, unfortunately not a Prime item. I think I did manage to find these on Prime when I bought this, uh, but I did pick this up quite a while ago. Okay, so we'll go over to Home Assistant and we will head over to Hass.io and we're going to go to our ESP Home install. Now, if you haven't had any experience with ESP Home, we've done a bit more of a walkthrough in one of my previous videos. I'm going to leave a link up at the top for the playlist, my Home Assistant uh, playlist. If you go ahead and search through on there, you will find a more in-depth video on uh, how to set up uh, ESP Home. It's the uh, temperature and light sensor video. We go into a bit more uh, detail about this uh, this bit of software. We're going to go ahead and open the web UI and we will go and click on the plus button and we're going to give our new node a name. So we're going to call this one uh, Office. Of it doesn't like capital letters this office underscore sensor okay we're going to click on continue and we're going to use a d1 mini for this uh, continue again it'll remember your wi-fi information if you've followed on in previous tutorials if not just go ahead and enter them in here click ok and we will submit Okay, and as we said before, if we click on here, we get an error. Um, and I found that the best way to uh, get rid of this error is just to give Home Assistant a quick restart. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back to here. Okay, so Home Assistant's now restarted, and we're back in the ESP Home dashboard. And we can see that instead of an unknown path, we now have uh, offline in the sensor that we've just created. And if we go ahead and click edit, we have uh, some information in our configuration file here. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to just paste this in. I'll leave this text down in the description. So if you do want to follow along, you can just you can paste it in there. Um, so the platform we're using is GPIO. The pin we're using on our D1 Mini is D1. We're going to call this soft, uh, sensor Office Motion Sensor and the device class is motion. Now I can't show you the uh, the wiring for this motion sensor because I actually have it in another project uh, that we'll be looking at in the next video. Uh, however, it is very easy. There is just three pins on the sensor. One goes to ground, one goes to five volts, and one goes to D1 or whatever pin you define in here. Don't put the VCC pin on 3.3 volts. I did that at first and the sensor doesn't act like it should. It does need 5 volts. Okay, so once we've done this, we're going to go ahead and click save. And we can close out of this. We're going to click on the three dots here and click on compile. We'll come back once this is finished compiling because it does take a little while and uh, it's fairly boring to watch. Uh, so just bear with me one moment while we do that. Okay, so here we are back and the uh, it has con finish, uh, finished compiling here and we're going to go ahead and download the binary. And once we've uh, done that, we can go ahead and open up the ESP Home Flash utility. And I already have the ESP8266 plugged into the computer, so we'll just r refresh this and it's not showing up for some reason, so bear with me a second. Okay, try a different USB cable. And it's not finding it. Okay, bear with me a second. I'll see if I can find out where this problem is and I'll come back. 
Okay, so we are back, um, and it doesn't seem to be good news. Uh, all of the USB ports on my desktop seem to have completely given up. I'm getting power through them, but no data. Uh, that's despite several restarts and some reinstalling of some drivers. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, system I, I'm using is about 10 years old now, um, and I am using it quite heavily uh, to do to edit these videos. So I think it's finally uh, starting to give up. Uh, luckily, Amazon Prime Day is just around the corner, so hopefully I'll be able to pick up some reasonably priced hardware um, to build a new system, which might make for an interesting video. However, uh, all is not lost here. So I have uh, used my laptop to flash the ESP chip. Unfortunately, I don't have a, any video capturing software on that, so I can't show you that. However, look back in our other videos and we'll show you how to flash uh, the ESP chip. Basically, what we're doing is finding the COM port, browsing to find the file uh, that we downloaded from Home Assistant, and then we flash the ESP chip from here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close this. Okay, so back over in Home Assistant, once we've flashed our ESP8266, um, you might need to restart Home Assistant uh, once we've connected it to the network, and you will get a notification, uh, and it'll show that it has found your new sensor. You go ahead and cl click Configure, and it'll add the new entity to your entity register. I've already done that, unfortunately, in all of the confusion here. I forgot to press record. Uh, apologies for that. But again, you can see that in my previous videos and it's a very straightforward process. So the last thing we have to do here is to add our new sensor to our office card here. Uh, to do that, we're gonna go up and click on configure user interface and we're gonna edit our office card and on entities here, we are going to scroll down. In fact, we don't even have to scroll down. It's right at the top here. We can see that we've got our office motion sensor. We can go ahead and click save. X out of here. And we can see now that we have our office motion sensor here. So let's go ahead and look at that in action. Okay, so here I have the light sensor mounted in a box, uh, in a project box. There's a few other things going on in here, but I'm going to save that for another video. Uh, so I'm just going to point the sensor just towards the wall here. And we can see over in Home Assistant, it's still saying motion detected, but we'll just give it a second and it should come up as clear. There we go. Uh, and we'll see now if I just move my hand in front of the sensor, we can see there that it's detected the motion. It is quite sensitive. Uh, it doesn't take much motion to set this uh, sensor off, uh, which could be a good thing, uh, or it might be a bad thing if you have pets who uh, might well be setting this off if you're gonna use this in some sort of alarm system. However, we'll look at what we're gonna use this sensor for uh, in upcoming videos. Uh, so that's it. This, that's it for this one. Uh, sorry, it was a bit all over the place. I had quite a few technical difficulties uh, here. I think it's probably time to be saving up for a new computer. Uh, but if you did find this video helpful or entertaining at all, please do go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, the channel is uh, growing day by day at the moment, and that's really fantastic to see. So thank you very much for everyone who has subscribed so far. Uh, please also like and comment, and thanks for watching.